So who are millennials um, and you know, why should I care? Is that, anyway, the, um, basically just to define Generation Y, anybody born between the 1980s and the early 2000s, um, and they're very important. Um, by 2018, they'll have the most spending power of any generation that's ever existed. And next year alone, they'll have, depending on who you speak to, an enormous spending power, $2.5 trillion, trillion. Also in the workplace, I mean, by 2025, three out of every four workers globally will what we currently call millennials. By anybody's definition, they are pretty much the market that you're going to be focusing on really from here on in. It's also, as I mentioned, one of the most talked about generations of all time. This is part of my concern. I was reading so much all the time, and so much of it is actually conflicting. So you get a lot of very positive things written and a lot of very negative things written. The common theme that, that came through this work and the thing that actually helped us define what it is, how we start figuring out a strategy that is based upon Generation Y, was this particular point. Did you have access to the internet before the age of 18? That may seem pretty obvious to us all here today, but it was quite interesting how it was the absolutely consistent theme in terms of the responses that we were getting and the different attitudes. I, I think, sort of without flagging where I'm going on this, basically, you just cannot, you cannot understate the impact of the way that people look at life when essentially they've always known the internet. They've never known a world without it. And for those of us who have actually adapted our lives to it, it's a fundamental point. And so essentially this was the, the, current, the theme that we used to actually come up with our definition at ASA of what we are going to call Generation Y and the Millennials, which is basically the connected generation. That is actually for us, not just because we're an IT firm, I think it's a very interesting point anyway, but at the end of the day, the connected generation is the consistent theme around which we are about to rebuild our company. Here's some other interesting points that we found. 46% admit to talking to their cell phone with no one on the other end of the line <laughs> to avoid a confrontation. Um, 80 this is a good one. 80% of millennials find it acceptable to lie to avoid embarrassment compared to 57% of baby boomers. Interesting. And then conflict averse. This is actually another very, very, again, hardly surprising when you think about it because if you're growing up in this world where you can broadcast yourself and you, you do it, l l a lot of your communication is by text, you actually can avoid conflict by text and by, by the written word and therefore the idea of breaking up with somebody in this particular case um, rather than doing it face to face, which is perhaps not the way I was brought up, but nonetheless it seems to be the way a lot of people do it now, um, is again in interesting. Again, we all know this one, but again, 58% would rather email somebody than call. Um, and again, anybody who, you know, whatever age you are, but and I have kids who are in this particular generation, but I, I know that it's pointless trying to call them. Texting is always a way to get. And then, you know, 26% of them are too bashful to ask for a doggy bag. They, you know, at the end of the day, it's not, not the image that they want to have, et cetera, et cetera. 67 report that they have never clicked on a sponsored story. They don't trust advertising. I don't really think that's a terribly meaningful statement. I think if you asked any generation ever since av advertising was born, they'd all, they'd all admit or they'd try and say that they don't like advertising. I don't think that is particularly insightful. But the one beneath it is unbelievably insightful, that 98% are more likely to engage with a friend's post over a brand's post. Again, we've all, I'm sure, been working with the importance of peer reviews and the importance of, of, of the new word of mouth. But it, I cannot overstate the importance of that. How about tapping into the connected generation's natural inclination to record their lives? It's a very, very important point because with all this information that now exists on this generation and the, the, the wish of this generation to record practically everything that they do, whether you know, through whatever channel they want to choose, let's get hold of the information in a positive way and help us to actually create things, whether it's products or services that they actually really want as opposed to what we believe they want. Ideas count for more than production quality. Um, I sort of half believe this. I mean, I, I, having been on the agency side much of my life, I've spent an awful lot of time persuading clients that production quality is terribly important, and it is. 
But at the end of the day, I think not everybody's got budgets, and you ideas are going to drive it. Um, and um, again, when you're dealing in an organization that you need to transform, but your budgets are not excessive, then a, a premium is essentially on the idea. And another insight, every moment is an opportunity for self-expression. Um, that, again, is um, something that at ASA we are um, wanting to, to focus on. But uh, I think it's, it comes down to, I think, the, 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 the piece of this, which is what are we actually going to do with all of this? Um, when I distill all of that information um, together, um, there's sort of four things. Um, in, re in transforming ASA from what it has been to what it needs to be, um, the idea of building an ecosystem, the idea of building an ecosystem, which isn't just about products, but about products and services, is, a f is fundamentally the only way we're going to be able to do it. We're going to be calling it BYOC, which is build your own cloud. But cloud is an issue in and of itself because it means so much or in some respects so little to people because it tends to mean just a way of storing information and accessing information. It needs to be an awful lot more than that. What it means for us is getting information um, in a good way. I'm not talking about sort of WikiLeaks or Snowden or anything, but get, getting information. The idea, you know, the gamification example I, I chose, but finding out insights on our community and providing the right products and services as a result of what they are telling us. And again, through the technology that we have and through the ability to, um, uh, to access it, that is absolutely possible. Um, the second part of what BYOC means is actually a different way of doing business. We've traditionally been very focused on um, uh, just selling um, products through channel. Um, that means something different today, both because the channel themselves have their own websites and, and interactive trade, but our need to develop our e-commerce is absolutely critical. So BYOC for us is going to mean a different way of actually doing business, whether it's through the social media idea that I showed with Twitter, or whether it's actually something even more fundamental than that in terms of how we engage, how you actually pay for our products and services and what you get for it. Ideas driving communication. Um, again, that doesn't sound very new, but actually, um, I think it is new in a way. To me, when I talk about ideas in communication, I think a big, big difference I see from any other time that I've been a practitioner in this industry is that I think the greatest creativity is coming through the dissemination of the message rather than what you might call core creativity itself. So I think that understanding that and what we do with that is actually, again, going to be a very much a fundal part of what we're building. And then finally, enabling self-expression, creating an ecosystem which is actually going to facilitate the people to do the things that they really, really like doing, which is talking about themselves in a good way and documenting the way that they are. Um, but it is all driven by fundamentally an understanding of what it is that we're talking about here, which is this generation that is essentially going to be preeminent in everything that we do going forward.